installation today. Just pick up the phone and do it. Watch the Fantasy Five drawing weeknights on CBS 4 News at 11, your lottery station. We now join Up to the Minute in progress. For a bitter political fight, CBS's Lara Logan reports from Baghdad. At this point, the Constitution has been presented to Parliament. It has been soundly rejected by the Sunnis, and it's currently being printed. Some five million copies that are being distributed to Iraqi families around the country, and it will now be up to them to decide in the October 15th referendum. The anti-war demonstration in Crawford, Texas, has gotten some high-profile help. Actor Martin Sheen and the Reverend Al Sharpton have joined hundreds of protesters camping near President Bush's Texas ranch. Sharpton says he felt compelled to meet Cindy Sheehan, the grieving mother of a fallen soldier who started the rally August 6th. In Pittsburgh, anti-war protesters camped out in front of an Army recruiting station a week after demonstrators clashed with police. This week's demonstration was relatively peaceful. While the anti-war movement calls for an immediate troop withdrawal from Iraq, Senator John McCain on Sunday told CBS's Bob Schieffer on Face the Nation that a premature troop withdrawal would be catastrophic. We need, Bob, to go into places and control it, install a, uh, an environment that people can live in, in in peace and security, and expand that. Our, our tactics have been that we go into a place and we have a search and destroy operation and then we leave. This is largely due to circumstances including not having enough troops on the ground. Uh, so then the bad guys reassert themselves and we have to go back again. McCain is calling on the Pentagon to send at least an additional 15 to 20,000 troops to Iraq and improve our tactics against the insurgency. In Israel, the Islamic Jihad has claimed responsibility for a suicide bombing Sunday. The bomber blew himself up outside a bus station, wounding two guards in the first attack since the Gaza withdrawal. The guards stopped the bomber before he could enter the terminal. On this morning's CBS Health Watch, a new skin cancer warning for people with red hair. Duke University researchers suggest that melanin, the skin pigment that darkens the sun exposure with sun exposure to provide either a tan or freckles, is chemically different in redheads than in people with dark hair. That difference might set them up for skin cancer even if they don't burn. In London, revelers were soaking up plenty of sun at the city's annual two-day Notting Hill Street Carnival. Billed as Europe's largest street party, up to two million people were expected to attend this year's carnival, which features samba schools, soccer dancers, steel bands, and food from around the world. And we're back in two minutes. Every home has a rhythm of its own. And now, finally, there's an air freshener that's in tune with it. Introducing new Airwick Freshmatic, an automatic spray you simply set at intervals of 9, 18, or 36 minutes. It delivers wonderful bursts of fragrance that keep your home smelling fresh for up to two months. New Airwick Freshmatic, set it to the rhythm of your home. Gesundheit. <laughs> We're sorry you've got allergies. Maybe we can help. Medical studies prove Benadryl is more effective than the leading allergy medicine. Histamine-blocking Benadryl is more effective at relieving allergy symptoms like runny nose, sneezing, itchy nose, and watery eyes. When allergies bloom, Benadryl is more effective than the leading allergy medicine. How much are you paying for internet service? $21? $23? Aren't you being charged too much? We think so. With People PC Online, you get unlimited internet access for only $10.95 a month. Go to peoplepc.com now to try us free for 30 days and compare us with your current ISP. With People PC Online, you get internet service for less than half of what the big guys cost. And that's just the beginning. You also get more local access numbers than AOL, plus a smart dialer that automatically chooses the fastest, most reliable number so you always get the best connection. All for just $10.95 a month. Try People PC Online free for 30 days and see for yourself. Go to peoplepc.com for a quick three-minute download of our easy-to-use software or call 1-800-748-3058. 
People PC Online, a better way to internet. It's 40 past the hour. Every year during hurricane season, there are hundreds of communities and millions of Americans who find themselves at risk of facing a major storm like Hurricane Katrina. Those who live along the southeastern Atlantic and Gulf Coast are most at risk. But for New Orleans, the threat of a hurricane means the potential to drown the city under more than a dozen feet of water. Lee Cowan reports. Geographically, New Orleans is the most unlucky city in the country when it comes to weathering a hurricane. To its north is Lake Pontchartrain, a monster spanning some 630 square miles. Storms have pushed over her banks before, most recently in 2002. But that's not the only worry. To the south of the city also sits the mighty Mississippi. That leaves New Orleans surrounded by water, an island with no high ground. Downtown actually sits in a basin, the brim of which are the levees on either side. With the storm pushing the waters of Lake Pontchartrain to the south, that metropolitan crater is likely to fill up like a punch bowl with no place for the water to drain. When it comes down to it, this is New Orleans' best defense against the storm, its levee system. This is essentially all that separates the waters of Lake Pontchartrain over here with downtown New Orleans over there. Now, the levee system is about 17 and a half feet high. The storm surge from Katrina could be as high as 20 feet, maybe even higher. That's already a three foot difference, and that doesn't include the waves on top of the storm surge, which could easily go right over the top. At 3.30, St. Charles Parish is going to put sandbags across and shut it down. For emergency officials, the worst case scenario? It's a vast area that'll be totally underwater uh, after the storm passes. Just how much water? We're looking at from 15 to 20 feet of water in the city during that time. Lee Cowan reporting. How do New Orleans city officials prepare for such a disaster? Mark Boyal is the former mayor of New Orleans, now the president of the National Urban League, and he joins us this morning with some insight. Good morning. Thanks Thank for being you. with us. Thanks for having me. How do you prepare for something like this? I mean, it sounds like you think about it all the time. There's a lot of, there's a plan in a book, so to speak, but, and in this case, I think city and state officials have done the right thing by encouraging people to evacuate, to leave the city. The most important thing is the protection of life. And the protection of life requires that those that can evacuate do evacuate. I think also the utilization of the Superdome uh, is an important step because there are citizens who simply, for whatever reason, can't evacuate. They don't have a car, they don't have the resources, they don't have anywhere to go. So the steps are, are, are appropriate, but this is the big one this is the one that the city's been preparing for for 40 years. Now, you were mayor from 1994 to 2002. To 2002. Right. Correct. So, you've got it. What are you thinking when you're hearing this? That they're comparing this possibly to Andrew? My heart is palpitating a little bit. Uh, yeah. I think you've got to be concerned that uh, there could be widespread uh, uh, property damage, uh, wind, and water. Uh, and that uh, the recovery effort could take a long time. What I do hope, however, is that there will be no loss of life. That's what you, you're concerned about. And I think that the city has taken, uh, and the state have taken the proper steps uh, in order to do this. So right now, we've got to batten down the hatches. Everyone's just got to pray. Uh, and New Orleans is a tough town, and its citizens are very hurricane savvy. Yeah, and they, they heed the warnings. They, they don't heed the warnings. In fact, on. they almost, the minute they sense a hurricane's coming, they're prepared to evacuate. So uh, those steps and the, and the utilization of the contraflow system on the interstate was, a, a, I think, an important step uh, to assist in the evacuation effort. Is, do, in your opinion, is everything in place that New Orleans needs, or would you? Should there be more federal help? Do you feel there are other things that could have been I done? I think everything up to this point, the, the, the bigger task is the recovery. How long will it take, the assessment of the damage, uh, getting life back to normal, uh, ensuring that people know when to come back and that when they do come back, in fact, uh, they've got something to come back to and uh, we'll, we'll just have to see how it goes. What happens is people will lose power. Uh, public utilities will go down, the communication system uh, and the phone system uh, will cease to work. Those types of things have to be brought back online in the recovery effort. But I think uh, it was uh, noteworthy that the president, uh, and I think it, uh, he, was, he was 
proper in doing this, and I think it's positive that he did that, that he acted in advance, uh, which basically sets up all of the federal resources to prepare now for the recovery effort, which could begin in the next 24 hours. What did you learn while you were mayor as far as this whole system? Did you have to make any changes during your time? Yeah, I think during my time, as the hurricanes became more severe and more frequent, we began to do things uh, such as look at the contra flow of the interstate. That arose out of the 1998 Hurricane George's effort. I think also the uh, uh, efforts that have been continuing through a number of mayors of New Orleans for the last 40 years to improve the levee system and improve the drainage system. Uh, but perhaps what has, I think, substantially improved perhaps over the last eight to ten years is that there's better regional cooperation among all of the local jurisdictions in southeastern Louisiana along with the state. That's important uh, because although people live in different towns, it's one hurricane, it's one region, it's one effect. It affects everyone the same. And you feel now everyone gets the help that they should be getting. All parts of the population are being helped properly. I think with, a, with, with an evacuation effort, the way it's been handled, I think that uh, it's, it's, it's proper and it's good. Uh, I certainly hope that everyone who has remained in New Orleans will take advantage of the shelter of last resort at the Superdome. That's what I hope uh, as, a, as someone who loves the city. Right. And tourism is, of course, very big. Are you, what are your fears about Well, I think that there's going to be uh, an impact on the economy. There's going to be an impact on tourism. But I think people should, should take a wait-and-see attitude. Let's see how these storms are tricky. They're unpredictable. Sometimes you prepare for the worst and there's an abatement. Uh, the wind is not as severe, the flooding is not as severe, but uh, I've never heard the words catastrophic used uh, by the Hurricane Center and by weather officials, so we know this is a big one. I know you'll be thinking about them too, down there yeah, as all and, of us uh, are. <laughs> we ought to think and I think we ought to pray and, uh, um, and just be prepared for the recovery. All right, Mark, thanks so much thanks. for being here. Thanks, for this. having me, you my bet. pleasure. Former New Orleans Mayor Mark Morrill, and we'll be right back. At Geico.com, you can handle all your car insurance needs online. It's so easy, a caveman could do it. <laughs> Seriously, we apologize. We had no idea you guys were still around. Yeah, next time maybe do a little research. <laughs> Gentlemen, are we ready to order? I'll have the roast duck with the mango salsa. I don't have much of an appetite, thank you. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Every home has a rhythm of its own. And now, finally, there's an air freshener that's in tune with it. Introducing new Airwick Freshmatic, an automatic spray you simply set at intervals of 9, 18, or 36 minutes. It delivers wonderful bursts of fragrance that keep your home smelling fresh for up to two months. New Airwick Freshmatic, set it to the rhythm of your home. My lymphoma had not only come back, but it was life-threatening. After I discovered I was pregnant, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. When I first found out that Frank had cancer, I felt like my whole world had fallen apart. I went to one more hospital because I wasn't willing to give up. Being treated like a real person for the first time in 10 years was such a relief. I feel like it, it's just like going back home. My son. Our cancer information specialists are available 24 hours a day. Call now and they'll send you this free life-changing video and information kit that shows you how state-of-the-art medicine combines with unique therapies to give you treatment options you may not even know exist. We as cancer patients, for whatever reason, have been dealt this kind of pain, but there is hope on the other side and there is great life after cancer. The Price Patrol, week two. Tonight, we'll visit a Wyoming town that's squeezing the last drop of oil out of old wells on the CBS Evening News with Bob Schieffer. Experience you can trust. 
This week, you've heard about their violent attacks they've mauled, even killed. What makes pit bulls so vicious? Should this breed be banned or can they be trained? And ever wished your spouse would give you more space? We found a couple with a solution. Happily married, but living apart. Not too far apart. He's on this side of the street, she's on the other. See how it works for them on The Early Show. The Wyoming town that's drilling for black gold. Tonight on the CBS Evening News. The price of oil topped $70 a barrel in futures trading overnight. The spike due in part to Hurricane Katrina. The storm forced the evacuation of offshore oil rigs in the Gulf of Mexico, a move that could push the price of gas even higher, at least in the short term. While everyone is paying higher prices, Trish Regan reports on how some people are feeling the pinch at the pump more than others. If people are feeling the pinch. They're not filling up. They're getting $10. Like their customers, Carmen and Judy Moretti are feeling it too. I have dropped and lost 30% of my business. When we visited their shell station in Greenwich, Connecticut, regular gas was going for a whopping $2.89. Our customers think that we're the ones that are setting the prices and that, and that we are making all this money. And but so they're not. Spread. It's Shell that sets the price, sending the Moretti's emails telling them what to charge. And when it comes to price, you can bet their customers are noticing. If I can save a few cents each fill up, I usually fill up a couple times a week, so it mounts up. And that spells trouble for the Moretti's. We're competing with other towns that are nearby. Same product. The exact same product, in fact. Just five miles away in neighboring Stamford, another Shell station was selling regular gas for $2.69, 20 cents per gallon cheaper. How does that happen? Through something called zone pricing. Zone pricing is when you have the same oil company charging different amounts for the same product delivered to two different customers on the exact same day out of the exact same terminal. Companies look at things like the affluence of a town and local competition before setting a price at the pump, which explains the discrepancy between the two stations. Do you sometimes go to other gas stations? In yeah, order I do. To I try to find the cheapest price. The question is, is it really worth it to drive out of your way just to find the cheapest gas? Every extra mile you drive is costing you both time and money. Uh, we can set it up algebraically. We asked middle school math teacher Rich Eister to help us answer that question. The scenario, two gas stations, one close to home selling gas at $2.60 a gallon, the other five miles away. The question, if you get 20 miles per gallon, how cheap would the gas at the second station have to be to make it worth the 10-mile round trip? 260 cents per gallon, 20 miles per gallon, and it turns out that you need to be able to save a dollar thirty. That means if you're buying you're 10 gallons, the price would need to be 13 cents per gallon cheaper. If you're getting 20 gallons, only six and a half cents cheaper. That's a big thing. Bottom line, it just doesn't add up for the Moretti's. The cheaper gas over in Stanford is well worth the trip. And Carmen Moretti wonders if he know. can remain part of the equation. If you call me three months from now, I don't know if I'll be here. Trish Regan, CBS News, New York. On Saturday, Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan cautioned the housing boom will inevitably cool off and prices could drop. The condominium bubble is already showing signs of being overstretched, as we hear from Bob Orr. No, not yet. It's a weekend ritual. You go buy the paper and find the open houses and usually end up fighting people to get into the door. And for Nicole Yanjanin and Mark Malou, it's getting old. I think I've looked at maybe 35 or 40 places. Yeah, I have put a couple of bids down and have lost all the bids. They're competing in a new national sport, condo hunting. More than 900,000 condominiums have been sold in the past year, and prices are up 11%. But there are signs the condo market is cooling off. July sales fell 5%, and there are now more unsold units on the market than ever before. We are seeing a bubble. But Economists like Dean Baker are especially concerned because so many people are buying multiple condos as investments, hoping to flip them, to turn right around and sell them for a quick profit. It's very, very risky. You know, this is just like buying into the NASDAQ in you know, late 99. Realtors say last month's sales dip does point to a little air being let out of the ballooned condo market. But they say with interest rates remaining low, any talk of a crash is premature. The demand for condos should remain strong for the next several years at least because of demographics and lifestyle changes. Especially among baby boomers. 
Many of them, now empty nesters, are trading in their suburban homes to be closer to the city. And their kids are part of the trend, too. They're entering a housing market where condos are often the only affordable option. We're not going to see 20, 30 percent price appreciation forever, but certainly we're going to see an expanding housing market. At this open house, for instance, I could have anywhere from 30 to 50 people to the open. There's still more talk of competition yeah. than worry about a bubble, next door. meaning okay, these friends might play the condo hunting game a while longer before closing any deal. New. Bob, right. or CBS News, Washington. Is, is the parking included in? Betting Barn celebrates over 40 years of the lowest discount prices by our king for the price of their queen. Just $7.99.88. And that price includes our famous eight-piece linen package and frame. Over $350 worth of the finest quality merchandise at no extra charge. Or oh, by the world-famous tempur at the lowest discount prices. You gotta feel it to believe it. It's good to be the king. Take it home with yours. Same-day delivery available by the Betting Barn near you. In Florida, Boynton Beach, Tamarack, West Palm Beach, Deerfield, and Davie. Free! Free? You're giving it away free. Hi, I'm Rob Graham, the president of Vital Basics, and I want to give you a bottle of Focus Factor, one of our best-selling supplements, absolutely free. Why would we give away a free bottle of Focus Factor? Because we know that if you try it, you'll buy it. Focus Factor contains nutrients that work with your natural brain chemistry to support focus, concentration, and memory. Focus Factor is now available at Walgreens and CVS Pharmacy, but if you call now, you can try it free. Simply call the number on the bottom of your screen and we'll send you a full-size bottle of Focus Factor, a $75 value, absolutely free. You simply provide $4.95 to help cover the cost of shipping. They let you try it free? It must be good. You know, I've been taking Focus Factor since we introduced it over two and a half years ago, and I wouldn't work a day without it. Buy it at Walgreens and CVS Pharmacy, or call now and try it free. Call 1-800-262-1762. Hi, I'm attorney Robert J. Fensterscheid. People have been telling me their legal problems for over 25 years. That's why I created my website, tellrobert.com. When you log on, you can fill out a free legal evaluation or download a free copy of the latest living will. Injured? Tell Robert. Car accident? Tell Robert. Hurt by prescription drugs? Tell Robert. Please visit me at tellrobert.com or call me at 1-800-LAWMAN-8. With the price of gas topping $2.63 a gallon on average, forcing Americans to dig a lot deeper into their pockets to fill up their tank, it's probably an understatement to say drivers are fed up. To get a first-hand look at how rising gas prices are affecting people coast to coast, CBS News is on the cross-country price patrol. On the road from New York to San Francisco, Jim Axelrod paused in Rawlings, Wyoming to sum up what he's been hearing from angry Americans. Driving across a country that often seems so divided, unity is actually easily enough found. Just ask people about gas prices. Well, my first thought, they're too damn high. Let's get them down. Nine different states into our trip. We've heard at least nine different places where people are putting the blame. I guess what makes me angry is that I believe that the oil companies are taking advantage of the situation and jacking the prices up. Um, if you look at their you know, quarterly earnings, they're as high as they've ever been. Whether it's at an amusement park in Sandusky, Ohio, or a mobile home park in Elkhart, Indiana, the oil companies top the list. They were making money at $28 a barrel. They're making a lot right now. At the Nebraska State Fair in Lincoln, Joe Hendrick, who drives the circuit every summer setting up his petting zoo, is pointing the finger at Washington. I plead with the government to maybe do some kind of relief for everybody in the country. In Iowa, Chris Studelberg, who spent 300 bucks today filling up two trucks to deliver papers, isn't begging Congress in the White House. He's blaming them for not promoting alternative fuels that would keep the money at home, not send it overseas. I think the answer is start burning corn and soybeans and tell the Arabs to take a flying leap. In this summer of gas price spikes, maybe it's not a question of who to blame but how we live. So take your pick. You know, if you want to blame anything for the run-up in energies, you've got a laundry list. But I think the one that trumps it all is just extremely strong demand. So far, the Price Patrol spent $262.68 on gas to travel 2,050 miles. Now, a year ago, that same trip would have cost about $82 less. Significant? 
Well, there's probably as many views on that as to whose fault it is to begin with. Jim Axelrod, CBS News, Nebraska. I'm in Wyoming. We thank you for joining us this half hour. Stay with CBS News throughout the morning for the latest on Hurricane Katrina. We're watching the storm as it makes landfall near New Orleans. And stay tuned throughout the day with complete coverage on the CBS Morning News and The Early Show. This is CBS News up to the minute. For news 24 hours a day, log on to cbsnews.com. Experience CBS News. Now on CBS News, up to the minute. Every person is hereby ordered to immediately evacuate the city of New Orleans. A city does what it can to prepare for what could be the most powerful storm ever. New Orleans braces itself for Katrina. Good morning, this is CBS News Up to the Minute. I'm Melissa McDermott. Bands of driving rain from Hurricane Katrina are slashing the U.S. Gulf Coast around New Orleans with landfall expected around dawn. Katrina has lost a little steam. Its winds are now at 155 miles per hour, which puts it on the borderline between a Category 4 and Category 5 hurricane. All of New Orleans is under a mandatory evacuation order. With the impact expected to stretch more than 100 miles from the eye of the storm, evacuations have also been ordered for the Mississippi and Alabama coastlines and the barrier islands along the Florida Panhandle. Every person is hereby ordered to immediately evacuate the city of New Orleans or, if no other alternative is available, to immediately move to one of the facilities within the city that will be designated as a refuge of last resort. CBS News correspondent John Roberts joins us now via telephone. John, tell us about where you are and what you're seeing. Hey, uh, good morning, uh, Melissa. I'm in the, uh, the historic Riverwalk area of New Orleans, right along the Mississippi River. Uh, this, this really is, uh, you know, besides the French Quarter, the real tourist trap of New Orleans. Uh, there's a major hotel down here, the Hilton River Walk, where uh, not only have people taken up every room, but also the hotel has thrown open its conference rooms to people who couldn't get out of town. So it's not only a hotel, it's a, uh, it's a shelter as well this morning. Uh, looking out in the streets right now, and uh, there's just nothing moving, sheets of rain coming down uh, with, uh, with lots of wind buffeting the trees around. But uh, everybody, of course, knows that uh, this is just a, a hint of uh, what's, a, what's ahead. The hurricane now lying about 130 miles away from New Orleans. It could take as long as uh, 10 hours to get here before they start feeling those uh, really, really high hurricane winds. But the good news uh, is, at least among those of us who are uh, prowling the corridors uh, here uh, early in the morning, is that the hurricane has gone down a little bit in intensity. The uh, uh, local forecasters here are saying it's now down to 155 miles an hour, which would put it at Category 4. Still uh, a very uh, dangerous storm, and the potential for damage is huge with something uh, that large. But it's not the 175 or even the 165 miles an hour that it was just a few hours ago. So, uh, you know, if there can be any kind of a, a sigh of relief breathed as, uh, as this hurricane is uh, looming just offshore with its uh, sights dead on the city of New Orleans, uh, that's at least a little bit of good news this that's, morning, Melissa. That's definitely it. John, you know, this, uh, residents in New Orleans are used to this kind of thing, maybe not this big, but they are certainly used to uh, hurricanes. What about the tourists? How are they handling this? Well, a lot of people that I've been talking to this morning who are also sort of prowling the halls uh, early today uh, are people who couldn't get out of town, and they keep saying, you know, why are they saying on the news, why didn't people get out of town? They said, we tried to get out of town, but all of the flights out were booked. We couldn't get a car to try to drive out, um, so they were, they were basically stuck here. Uh, it's true that uh, New Orleans sees its fair share of hurricanes. I think statistically it gets either hit or brushed by a hurricane uh, every four years or so. I was here back in 1998 when Hurricane George was uh, threatening. And uh, it's about every 11 years that it gets a, a direct hit. But this, this is the biggest hurricane uh, ever to uh, have its sights set on uh, New Orleans. Uh, people aren't quite sure what's going to happen. Uh, I was trying to get about an hour's uh, sleep earlier tonight, but the hotel was creaking like a tree fort. And I just thought, you know, it's a 27-story hotel. I don't know if it's built to withstand the type of winds that are coming at it. So anxiety getting the better part of me. I'm up and, uh, and walking around this morning. But e even though people are kind of used to it, this is a whole different animal down here and, and people just don't know what to expect.
people who have gotten out of town are very thankful that they did. People who are still here in town are, are really hoping for the best. And the, and the one word that we keep hearing from officials uh, far and wide across uh, not only the city of New Orleans but all of the surrounding parishes is pray. Right. Uh, because uh, with uh, so much uncertainty uh, looming just south of here, uh, nobody's sure uh, what to do. And John, quick question: They're not worried about. Are they worried about flooding in your hotel? Um, already, uh, there's a, a lot of water coming down. There's a, a big atrium in the hotel, and uh, there's just an awful lot of water sheeting off of that, and that's uh, already leaking into the hotel. Some of the breezeways that connect the main hotel with the Riverwalk section are, are leaking as well. You know, I'm, I'm standing right now on on top of the uh, the flood wall that separates the Mississippi from uh, the rest of uh, New Orleans. So the gates are still open. There's uh, no sign of flooding at this point. But, but uh, you know, the, the thing I can't stress enough is that nobody's sure what's going to happen. Nobody's seen a hurricane like this before. They don't know if Lake Pontchartrain is going to overflow its banks. They don't know if the Mississippi River would come up, though I, I wouldn't think that that's likely. But they're all kind of holding their breath here, uh, try, just waiting to see what will happen because nobody's experienced anything like this before. And I have a feeling you're not going to be getting any sleep. But, John Roberts, thank you so much for joining us this morning. All right, Melissa. Good to be with you. Thanks. Thank you. As John just described, the biggest fear is the storm surge and the possibility of catastrophic flooding. Located between Lake Pontchartrain to the north and the Mississippi River to the south, parts of New Orleans are as much as 10 feet below sea level. But with 15 inches of rain expected and a storm surge of up to 28 feet with waves on top of that, some or all of New Orleans could end up underwater. We go now to CBS's Dave Price, who's at the Louisiana Superdome in New Orleans, which has been turned into a huge shelter for those who wouldn't or couldn't leave the city ahead of the storm. Dave, tell us what it's like there. Well, Melissa, right now things are quiet inside. There are about eight to 10,000 people. This was the refuge of last resort. Now, inside, there's 1.8 million feet of space. I mean, this is where the New Orleans Saints play. There's room for 70,000 fans to come in here, 90,000 if it's standing room, to pack in here and see an event like the Rolling Stones or, or a professional football team. But right now, it is a place of peace and quiet for those who sought shelter here. Uh, earlier this evening, they processed all those folks who arrived during the day, who wrapped around the Superdome. They served up MREs, meals ready to eat, military meals. This has been an operation which has been coordinated by the city and state office for emergency preparedness, and it's in cooperation with the, uh, with the, uh, of course, uh, reserves. And everyone has come together to try and make life as peaceful as possible here. But this morning, uh, we're seeing things, as George mentioned, really begin to whip up. And one of the biggest concerns, not only in New Orleans, but specifically at the Superdome, is water. And in the event that there is flooding, uh, that could seriously impact uh, how smoothly this operation here works. You now, we've seen little dry patches, uh, again, as, as the feeder bands have, though, uh, become more compact it's become uh, certainly windier and more consistently rainy. And over the next several hours, as George has forecasted, we anticipate uh, that it is going to be very, very treacherous out here and the winds are gonna pick up. Gusts now, again, popping up there into the 50 mile per hour zone, but those are gonna be sustained winds in just a few minutes. And after that, and as we progress, as the storm makes landfall and moves closer to New Orleans, we're gonna see winds which are well over 100 miles per hour and those will be sustained. CBS's Dave Price. More news ahead. This is Up to the Minute. Right now, you'll save thousands with Ford employee pricing. Plus, you'll receive a brand new color TV, but only at Armstrong Ford of Homestead. New 2005 F-150 Explorer Expedition and receive a brand new color TV. Now, a little number from Betty Bob. Betty Bob's number one when it comes to air bed comfort. Buy this comfort at King Size Bed at Betty Bob's every day lower discount price. And that price includes our famous linen package and frame. Over four hundred dollars worth of quality merchandise at no extra charge. This King Size air bed features two digital controls with settings from zero to one hundred. Soft to hard. When it comes to slumber, Betty Bob's got your number. So with yours, same day delivery available by the Betty Bob near you in Florida, Boynton Beach, Tamarack, West Palm Beach, Deerfield, and Davie. Hi, I'm Larry Coker for Evening's Delight. For the absolute best selection in prices on barbecue grills, fireplaces, and hot tubs, go where I shop, Evening's Delight. Come in today for great holiday specials. Oh, Evening's Delight delivers too. Urgent. Employee pricing plus. Save up to 6738 on Pacifica. Save up to 7131 on Town & Country. Employee pricing plus at Day Jeep Chrysler. 
Southwest 158th Street and US 1. Help to prepare. Folks want to know exactly what's happening. Simple things that you can do to ensure limited damage. We kept you informed. We've watched this thing go from tropical storm to hurricane. And when Katrina made landfall. The rain is slamming us. This is the flooding that we talked about. We helped you stay out of harm's way. There you can see where the worst of it is concentrated. You can see the sand whipping to the west. Now for the latest on the cleanup. Look at all of the water here. Count on CBS 4 News to keep you up to the second. Keep watching. Turn back the clock on aging. The newest, latest, most critical information. This is a magic pill. Reduce your cancer risk 50%. The number one anti-aging food. Inside Secrets. Next Oprah. Today at 4 on CBS 4. It's 10 past the hour. Hurricane Katrina is just about to make landfall just south of New Orleans. Its top winds have diminished somewhat, and the storm is now a Category 4 hurricane. For the very latest, we turn to CBS News meteorologist George Cullen, who has been tracking the storm all morning. And when we say Category 4, it's borderline Category 4? Right. Well, it's moving in the right direction. It's weakening a little bit. As a matter of fact, let me explain these colors you see on the satellite map. All right. The darkest orange, that's where the, the worst weather is, the highest winds, the heaviest rain, the, the storm surge. But you see on, on the left side or the western part of that storm, a lot of dry air is getting into it, and the eye is starting to wobble and look a little ragged. That tells me that this storm is weakening. It's still a dangerous storm. I mean, it's going to come in as a Category 4 hurricane right on the southern tip of Louisiana to the east of Grand Isle. But when it crosses that little piece of land and it makes landfall again, probably, I think, along the coast of Mississippi, it might actually be a borderline Category 3 to a Category 4 storm. And the center, I think at least, is going to really pass a little to the east of New Orleans. New Orleans may dodge a bullet here. It's, it's not going to be good there, but it's not going to be nearly as bad as what it could have been if this storm had passed right over the city. So they're moving really from a worst-case scenario to maybe yeah, a little not, not quite as bad. I mean, right. again, it's not, it's not a, a, a rosy outlook, let's say, but at least it's not going to be as bad as what it could have been. Now, this isn't good news, though, for the coastline of Mississippi. So Pascagoula, Biloxi, Mississippi, they're going to have that storm surge because the eye is actually going to be pretty close to them. So they'll be in the strong uh, section of that storm with a south wind, which pushes all of that water up against the coastline. So they're going to see the big st uh, storm surge, 15 to 20 feet. New Orleans may not. They may have uh, flooding because of the lake and, of course, the heavy rain. But the storm surge may not be as bad as what we had feared earlier. It's a a little early to say, but I think that trend is is, is working in their favor right we're now. We're talking about levees that are at the tallest, 17 and a half feet. So, and we were talking 28 foot storm surge. So now, what right. you're saying is, I don't is think it's going to be that high in, in downtown New Orleans. I, I really don't. I certainly hope not. But along the coast of Mississippi, it may be because some of the buoy reports out over in the Gulf had wave heights of 35 to 40 feet. Now, that's about 100 or so miles away from the coastline, but there's a lot of water out there that's moving in their direction. And, I mean, it's still going to be bad when you look at the coastline around Mississippi and maybe even possibly Alabama. But in downtown New Orleans, it may not be quite as bad, again, as what it could have been. And, you know, it's a very interesting, Melissa. This storm looks like it's taking almost the exact track that Camille did back in 1969. And Camille was the strongest hurricane ever to make U.S. landfall. And it passed just to the east of New Orleans. They kind of dodged a bullet with Camille. And it looks like this storm is actually doing the same thing. And if you look at our uh, storm track, the projection over the next couple of days where it's going to go, it's going to go up into the lower Mississippi Valley, eventually the Tennessee Valley, dumping some very heavy tropical rain. Uh, we'll probably see at least four to seven inches of rain in many areas. So there's going to be widespread flooding up through the Tennessee Valley and eventually by late Tuesday and Wednesday into the uh, Ohio Valley and maybe east of the Appalachians as well. So it's not just going to be right along the coastline. Of course, that's where the dramatic winds will be occurring. But the flooding, the inland flooding sometimes can be just as dangerous as what happens right along the shore. Now, is there any chance that this could change to an even better scenario? Well, I think Category 3 would be about the best you, you could possibly hope for because it's so close to land right now. Um, I think New Orleans is getting the best situation they could possibly have gotten with this storm, considering what it was just 12 hours ago. I mean, it has been gradually weakening, very gradual, and um, when it makes landfall, you know, we're going to see it really get ripped up. Now, they're going to have a lot of rain in, in downtown New Orleans. Again, looking at that, you can see those, those dark bands of orange are sweeping inland. So, 
you know, I, I certainly think that we've seen two to three inches of rain already this moving through the area. This is a live picture right here we're looking at. It's, you know what, it's so hard to measure rain when it's being whipped around by 50 and 60 mile an hour winds too. So sometimes it's an estimate. There's still going to be flooding and it's going to be bad there, but it, it's not going to be, you know, as bad. That's, that's still great news. Yeah, it? it is. And you know, um, we, just a few years ago we had Hurricane Lily and it was a Category 4 hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico and it looked like it was dead eye right on to New Orleans and it started to fall apart right before landfall and it made landfall as a Category 1. Now this isn't going to happen but it ran over shelf water it's called and the water was cooler and there was a little drier air worked in the same thing happened so you know again this is best case scenario I think at least uh, for the city of New Orleans. All right George thank you so much for joining sure. us this morning. Joining us by telephone this morning is Dr. Walter Maestri, Director of Emergency Management for Jefferson Parish, Louisiana. Are you there, Dr. Maestri? I am. What are you expecting this morning? Well, we're expecting to feel the, the brunt of a uh, major hurricane, a Category 5, as it, as, as it approaches us. Uh, right now, we're beginning to experience the tropical storm force winds. Um, this is uh, a, a massive storm with tremendous power and it, uh, it's, it appears it's going to pass, the eye of that storm will pass right over the uh, metropolitan area. What dangers does this storm present as opposed to other hurricanes you've faced in the past? Well, for us, if, if, if uh, your listeners are familiar with uh, New Orleans and its topography, we basically exist below sea level. On average, the, the uh, city of New Orleans and its metropolitan area is somewhere between 6 and 12 feet below sea level, and uh, this storm is going to push in front of it uh, a tidal surge somewhere between uh, 20 and 24 feet. So when you add to that uh, the the, the uh, amount below sea level, you can see that we are looking at a significant possibility of of water in this community. And uh, those kind of floodwaters can be uh, can be catastrophic. Are there some fears that there is going to be a loss of life? Oh, absolutely. Uh, with this, uh, you know that is certainly possible. We have evacuated from the metropolitan area close to uh, close to a million people in the last uh, in the last uh, 48 hours. So uh, a lot of our citizens took heed, paid attention, and uh, they realized just what the problems are uh, given this topography. And so they they have left. Uh, like every other major metropolitan area, however, we have uh, a number of folks who just don't have the resources to allow them to do that. And those people are are now being. Uh, uh, you know, they're still here and they're in shelters and in uh, refuges of last resort and uh, they potentially could be in, in serious danger. It sounds like you've done pretty much everything you can possibly do at this point. Dr. Maestri, are you optimistic? Well, the, the good news is that uh, if, if it's possible, it could have been worse because if this storm had come in at us a little bit more to the west, uh, that would have put the entire metropolitan area you know, in, uh, in the right front quadrant, which is where all the, the power of the storm actually is. And so that would have been worse than, than what we, we actually are, we think at least we're going to experience. Well, we're all thinking of you here. We appreciate you talking to us. Dr. Walter Maestri, Director of Emergency Management in Jefferson Parish, Louisiana. Literally the center of the storm this morning. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back. This is CBS News up to the minute. It's a little something I've done every night since I was a kid. Empty my pocket change into this old jar. It's never much, just what's left after I break a dollar. <laughs> and I never thought I could get quality life insurance with my spare change. Neither did I, until I saw a commercial for Colonial Pen. Imagine people our age getting life insurance at such an affordable rate. <laughs> If you're between 50 and 85, call now for free information on life insurance. This guaranteed acceptance life insurance is easy on your budget and just as easy to get. Now, there's no medical exam to take. No health questions will be asked. You know, for about 25 cents a day, you can have the protection to help cover your final expenses. And you cannot be turned down for any reason. Your premium will never increase. And after the first two years, your benefit doesn't decrease for the life of your coverage. And remember, your acceptance is guaranteed. Call now for free information and a free gift. All I did was make a phone call to Colonial Pen. They answered all my questions. It couldn't have been any easier. And we both got the coverage we should have had for years now. Mm-hmm. With change to spare. <laughs> <laughs>
Call toll-free 1-800-651-2900 to receive free information and a free gift in the mail. Call 1-800-651-2900 or please visit our website at colonialpen.com. There's no risk or obligation. That's 1-800-651-2900. Every home has a rhythm of its own. And now, finally, there's an air freshener that's in tune with it. Introducing new Airwick Freshmatic, an automatic spray you simply set at intervals of 9, 18, or 36 minutes. It delivers wonderful bursts of fragrance that keep your home smelling fresh for up to two months. New Airwick Freshmatic, set it to the rhythm of your home. The Price Patrol, week two. Tonight, we'll visit a Wyoming town that's squeezing the last drop of oil out of old wells. Later in the week, what high gas prices are doing to truckers. And we'll take a look at whether hybrid cars really are the wave of the future. All on the CBS Evening News with Bob Schieffer. Experience you can trust. This week, you've heard about their violent attacks. They've mauled, even killed. What makes pit bulls so vicious? Should this breed be banned, or can they be trained? Find out on The Early Show. The Wyoming town that's drilling for black gold, tonight on the CBS Evening News. It's now 20 past the hour. Top stories on Up to the Minute. Hurricane Katrina is now a powerful Category 4 storm moving toward New Orleans, packing winds of 155 miles per hour. Hundreds of thousands are ordered evacuated in advance of the storm. The levees that protect the below sea level city of New Orleans are in danger of being breached by strong storm surges now estimated to be 15 to 20 feet. Thousands who wouldn't or couldn't leave the city are taking refuge inside the Louisiana Superdome. People were told to bring enough food, water, and medicine to last up to five days. On the CBS News Money Watch, investors will be keeping an eye on Hurricane Katrina and another on the price of oil. Katrina's run through the Gulf of Mexico forced offshore oil refineries to shut down. That forced overnight oil future prices to spike to more than $70 a barrel, a new record. Scott Rappaport has more on the week ahead. Wall Street will be looking to start the week with a rebound from a summer slump. Six-week lows in the major indexes have not been boosted by trade volumes that are traditionally weak this time of year. And a fall in consumer sentiment for the month of August is not helping matters. But there is some movement expected in the retail sector. The Saks Board of Directors is close to deciding who will purchase the upscale retailer. Most of the suitors want to split up the asset and take either the flagship store or the retail chain separately. Companies' recent woes don't seem to be affecting the potential sale. And United Airlines has gained some air space now that a Chicago judge has granted their request for an extension to file their plan for escaping bankruptcy. United's parent company, UAL Corp., says they've secured up to $3 billion in debt financing that should allow it to emerge from Chapter 11 by early 2006. And pharmaceutical manufacturer Merck is moving towards settling some of the nearly 5,000 lawsuits pending in Vioxx-related cases. The company previously said it would fight every case and appeal the $253 million award a, a jury granted the family of a Texas man who died after several months of taking the drug. As always, you can track the business headlines at cbsnews.com. With your Money Watch, I'm Scott Rappaport. One time and possible future Wall Street darling Martha Stewart has two mornings to go before she'll be freed from her home confinement. Michelle Miller has more on how she's planning to take back her life. And I'll be back. I will be back. Starting August 31st at midnight when her ankle bracelet comes off, Martha Stewart will officially be back. And she'll be bigger than before when a stock scandal sent her to prison and home confinement. With eight new projects, including two TV shows, a live audience show a la Oprah, and an Apprentice spinoff. Add that to her already large empire, and it's clear the queen of quality living is set to relaunch her career in a major way. Well, am, am I the same girl? Uh, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Although, I've changed. So <laughs> Some of those changes, a new CEO and a partnership with reality show guru Mark Burnett, aim to change the way her business is run. The stock is up, rebounding from a low of around $9 a share after her sentencing to almost $31 a share now. And her print advertising revenue is up 42 percent. But analysts like Dennis McAlpine are skeptical. What you really want to see is what the advertising will do next year. If it comes back to the 2003-2002 level, then maybe she's arrived. 
Stewart remains on supervised probation until March 2007, which means her probation officer will be keeping tabs on her. And if she breaks any rules, she may have to reacquaint herself with the very bracelet she's about to boot. Michelle Miller, CBS News, New York. Now here's a look at your up-to-the-minute forecast. The satellite picture is dominated by Hurricane Katrina along the Gulf Coast with storm clouds already spreading over much of the Deep South. Elsewhere, unrelated clouds will drift across the Ohio Valley and Northeast while the West is clear. Later today, horrific weather conditions will develop along the Gulf Coast with flooding downpours, heavy winds and tornadoes moving inland. The Northeast will see a few showers and the Northwest will turn windy and rather cool. If you or anyone you know has been injured in an automobile or any kind of accident due to the negligence of another, the law firm of Cohen & Cohen may be able to help you. If you've been injured in any accident, out of work, expenses adding up, call Cohen & Cohen. Ask someone you know. They may have been helped by Cohen & Cohen. Call 1-800-33-COHEN. Call 1-800-33-COHEN. Take it home with yours. Same day delivery available by the betting bar near you. In Florida, Boynton Beach, Tamarack, West Palm Beach, Deerfield, and Davie. Austin Burke has been the original suit warehouse in South Florida since 1945. Barry, why is Austin Burke the leader? Austin Burke is the leader in South Florida because of price, service, and selection. Guys, if you really want to save a lot of money on designer clothing, this is the store. We have Super 150 pants, regularly $200, $99. We have Giorgio Armani, Canali, all the designers, starting from $149.99. Austin Burke, 2601 Northwest 6th Avenue in Miami. Call 305-576-2714. When severe weather strikes. The storm has really surprised uh, a lot of people. What we've seen is just horrendous. CBS 4 News brings you all-out coverage. We're going to stick it out as long as we can. Every update. This is a bad situation. Everything is picking up here. Every detail. This is now becoming a deadly storm. Everything you need to know to stay ahead of the storm. We are out here so you don't have to be. CBS 4 News. These are amazing pictures. Your weather station. No matter how hard New Orleans or other waterfront cities in Hurricane Katrina's path are hit by the storm, they'll be counting on the curious and the adventurous to help them bounce back. As Joey Chen reports, they may want to take a cue from some cities relying on some high-tech help in getting those tourists and their money from A to B. The dog days of summer in the nation's capital. It's hot. It's humid. There's got to be a better way to see Washington than this. How about this? Do you pull your handles forward when you stop, or backwards when you stop? Remember the Segway, the once super secret invention that was supposed to revolutionize the world, change the way we travel, slash energy consumption? That hasn't happened. But in D.C. and some other big cities, the slow glide is quickly becoming the cool way to be a tourist. You feel like a minor celebrity. Everybody looks. Most want to try. Some get a little too excited. Remember when the president had his spill? But with 30 minutes of practice and at less than $20 an hour, just about anybody can segue around the sites. We've got Mercury 7, John Glenn's capsule. Segway sightseeing has taken off here faster than anywhere else. More than 3,500 tourists have learned to glide this summer. Segways have run into some roadblocks. D.C. set an age limit, 16. And though the machines are allowed on most sidewalks here, disabled advocates say they ought to be kept out of the way. I think it's important to, to really restrict it until, you, until there's a way uh, to make sure that they're safe and we're not going to have a whole bunch of pedestrian injuries. The Segway still isn't cheap, nearly $5,000 a piece. But for a few hours of fun, the price on a rental is right. Visitors are flocking to them just as fast as their legs will carry them. Joey Chen, CBS News, Washington.
And we thank you for joining us this half hour. Stick with CBS News throughout the morning for the latest on Hurricane Katrina. We're watching the storm as it makes landfall near New Orleans. And stay tuned throughout the day with complete coverage on the CBS Morning News and the Early Show. This is CBS News up to the minute. For news 24 hours a day, log on to cbsnews.com. The Price Patrol, week two. Tonight, we'll visit a Wyoming town that's squeezing the last drop of oil out of old wells. Later in the week, what high gas prices are doing to truckers. And we'll take a look at whether hybrid cars really are the wave of the future. All on the CBS Evening News with Bob Schieffer. Experience you can trust. Experience. CBS News. Powerful and dangerous, Hurricane Katrina, a monster storm, takes aim at the Gulf Coast. New Orleans evacuation, hundreds of thousands are ordered to flee the low-lying city. This is the CBS Morning News for Monday, August 29th. Thanks for joining us. I'm Susan McGinnis. The potential for catastrophe. Hurricane Katrina is very large and very strong and taking dead aim at the Gulf Coast this morning. Katrina is a monster storm closing in on New Orleans with sustained winds of 155 miles per hour and storm surges that threaten to engulf the city. Early show weatherman Dave Price is in New Orleans with the latest. Dave, good morning. Good morning, Susan. We continue to track the storm. The radar picture shows just a massive Massive system continuing to churn in the Gulf, pushing towards New Orleans and the Gulf Coast. And over the next several hours, conditions are going to continue to deteriorate. Winds and rain have really picked up here in New Orleans this morning. We're outside the Superdome, which is one of the last bastions of safety for those who had no place else to go. Over the last several days, evacuations have continued. And uh, in New Orleans, they had some elaborate plans, including contraflow. In other words, sending everyone away and out of the city. That evacuation became mandatory yesterday when the mayor told everyone to get out, that it was no longer in their hands and that the municipal authorities could no longer guarantee the safety for anyone who stayed in New Orleans. So people boarded up, they packed up, and in some cases a 50-mile trip to places like Baton Rouge took between 8 and 10 hours. This morning, all those who remain are people who are in shelters like this one. And there are, by the way, up to 100,000 people in makeshift shelters around the state. And those who have decided to take fate into their own hands and stay inside their own homes. New Orleans this morning is a ghost town. There is no one here. There is nothing going on. And the winds are beginning to pick up. The worst is yet to come over the next several hours, Susan. And we'll continue to be here and we'll bring you uh, the developing situation live throughout the morning, including on the early show a little bit later and on your local news. Dave, is there anything you can tell us about the possible flooding from the storm surges? That seems to be the real concern here. It certainly is. The problem at this point for anyone not familiar with this terrain is that much of New Orleans is below sea level, and they're anticipating upwards of 15 inches of rain and some significant swells. What that may do to many parts of this city is simply put it underwater. The French Quarter, areas like that, in addition to flooding and high winds, which can take down structures already weakened by time and termites, is it can flood them. And in places like this, even the Superdome, with advanced technology and engineering, a certain amount of water, which can fill some of these pump systems, will almost make uh, many of these buildings uninhabitable and non-functional. Back to you. All right, Dave, we'll talk to you a bit later this morning. Dave Price in New Orleans. And as Dave pointed out, it's not just New Orleans that is in danger. Katrina will impact an area from Louisiana all the way to the Alabama-Florida border. Bianca Solorzano is east of New Orleans in Biloxi, Mississippi. Bianca, good morning. Good morning, Susan. Yes, we started seeing rain here in Biloxi last night, and as we've moved into the early morning hours, that rain has increased. We've been seeing it uh, strengthen and then weaken. Those are the bands that are now starting to arrive. Really, Katrina's way to say that she is on her way. The massive hurricane started hammering the Gulf Coast overnight and isn't expected to let up for hours. 
New Orleans looked like a ghost town as it braced for a direct hit. This has the potential for catastrophic damage and loss of life. The mayor ordered all 485,000 residents to get out and highways leading to higher ground were still jammed in the darkness. Three nursing home residents died during the evacuation. Those without the means to leave headed for last resort shelters. Well past nightfall, many were still waiting for a seat in the Superdome. So we've got a very safe and secure, secure environment for them. It's just not going to be comfortable. Stranded Big Easy visitors found shelter on the higher floors of their hotels. To start out as a vacation in a college trip, and who knows how it's going to end. Katrina is such a big storm. Hurricane force winds can reach out about 100 miles from its center, creating danger here in Mississippi as well as Alabama and also far inland. But New Orleans looks the most vulnerable. The city sits below sea level and is surrounded by a large lake and the Mississippi River. Katrina's storm surge could easily top the levees built to keep the water out. We're looking at from 15 to 20 feet of water in the city during that time. Katrina took nine lives when it struck Florida's southeastern coast as a much weaker storm. Hunker down Gulf Coast residents have little to do now but wait and see how bad this hit will be. And it is expected to be very, very bad. At last check, at Katrina, 110 miles southeast of New Orleans, and people are just bracing. They're going to be dealing with so many different facets of this storm. The wind, the rain, the powerful wind, and the storm surge, uh, really no telling what kind of destruction is ahead. Reporting live in Biloxi, Mississippi, I'm Bianca Solorzano. Susan, back to you now. All right, Bianca, you take care. Bianca Solorzano in Biloxi, thank you. Katrina cut across Florida last week as a Category 1 storm. Recovery efforts are going slowly. There are still widespread power outages in the Miami area and wind damage to clean up. Florida caused damage to thousands of homes and businesses. Schools in Miami will remain closed today. At least nine deaths in Florida were blamed on the storm. Hurricane Katrina is already putting added pressure on America's oil and refinery operations. Oil companies have evacuated offshore Gulf drilling platforms and shut down about a million barrels of refining capacity. The disruption spiked oil prices briefly past $70 a barrel. High oil prices continue to translate into record gas prices. The latest national survey shows the average price for all grades up nearly 13 cents to $2.65 a gallon. On the CBS Money Watch, the stock market is bracing for the impact of Hurricane Katrina as oil prices surge. The Dow lost more than 53 points on Friday. The Nasdaq was off more than 13 and a half. For the latest on the markets, log on to CBSNews.com. In Southern California, meanwhile, firefighters are trying to contain a wildfire. Nearly 5,000 acres have burned near Palm Springs since Friday. 100 homes have been evacuated, but so far, none have been destroyed and no injuries have been reported. Iraqis will vote on their new constitution October 15th, but it won't have the support of Sunni Arabs. The draft constitution was presented to Parliament yesterday. The Sunni rejection is a setback for the Bush administration. They claim the Constitution will divide Iraq. President Bush says it's natural to see disagreement. Of course there's disagreements. We're watching a political process unfold, a process that has encouraged debate and compromise, a Constitution that was written in a, in a society in which uh, people recognized that, uh, that there had to be give and take. The Constitution will be defeated if two-thirds of the voters in three provinces reject it. Outside the president's ranch in Crawford, Texas, this week, Cindy Sheehan will end her protest of the war in Iraq. Yesterday, she took part in an interfaith prayer service with an anti-war message. Mark Nola reports. Instead of anti-war chants, bells tolled at the protest campsite a mile from the president's ranch. Cindy Sheehan let religious leaders take the spotlight at a Sunday prayer service, and their remarks had a decidedly anti-war slam. I believe that we here today at Camp Casey, standing with Cindy Sheehan and the Gold Star families for peace, are on God's side. But no remarks were more pointed than those of the Reverend Al Sharpton, who likened Sheehan to Esther of the Bible and denounced those who criticize her. Let's not scapegoat these families. Cindy wasn't the one that said there were weapons of mass destruction over there. 
She wasn't the one that said mission was accomplished. But on the CBS News broadcast, Face the Nation, Republican Senator John McCain suggested Sheehan was being used. Of course, people that are against the war will take advantage of a sympathetic figure such as this. That's not the first time in American history uh, that's happened. With President Bush away from his ranch today and tomorrow, the anti-war protesters are gearing up for a bus tour starting Wednesday, heading to Washington, and a rally there next month. Mark Noller, CBS News, Crawford, Texas. A Palestinian suicide bomber struck in southern Israel on Sunday. The blast was detonated outside a bus station in Beersheba. Two Israeli security guards were seriously injured, but it appears they prevented the bomber from injuring or killing many more people. Just ahead on the morning news, the Natalie Holloway case. Two brothers back in for questioning about the disappearance of the Alabama teen. First, John Roberts with.